Hi, this is James Gall with God Encounters Today podcast, where God Encounters are for everyone, and they are especially for you. They really are. Did you believe that? Or was that just a saying? You know, I have to challenge myself with this because some things can become rote. Some things can just become a cliche. So I'm going to challenge myself right now. God encounters are for everyone. And yes, God encounters are especially for you. They really, really are. Now, that was a little better. I was closer to believing it that time. Do you know that we can become overly familiar with our own lingo and we actually stop believing what we say we believe? Well, we might get into some things on this because I'm doing a series right now based on the triumph, your comprehensive guide to spiritual warfare. And right now, we have an entire curriculum kit with the study guide, which is called Mantled for Victory. And there is a class that is then recorded in an MP3 downloadable file or a MP4 with the video format. And it is in an incredible, you know, price point right now, I think at 54% off, and you can get the entire mega bundle or curriculum kit at maybe $129. That's the book, the study guide, and your choice of the audio or the video format downloadable, and it is really excellent. Okay, so let's pray. Father, thank you for this wonderful time together because it is going to be something that is going to be strategic, pinpointed, and very valuable for every one of our listeners and watchers. In Jesus' holy name, amen and amen. Now, yes, I am in a series that is on your comprehensive guide to spiritual warfare, The Triumph in the God Encounters uh, Today podcast. Now, I always have a theme scripture, and then I give us a title and we jump into this. So, my theme scripture, did you know why I have a theme scripture? And a lot of people don't even quote the Bible today in podcasts. Did you know that? Well, I'm real aware of that. And so... I give us a theme verse because today's society is very somewhat biblically illiterate concerning the Bible. So at least I am giving us an opening scripture and then I give us biblical principles. So we're have looked last week in the Global Prayer Storm podcast on the fiery darts of the evil one. Let's go on the offensive. You have a fire extinguisher. Huh? Yes, it was really good. So go back and listen to that one. And that was just about the shield of faith. And about how the shield of faith that we have been given isn't just the little round shield, but it is actually the size of a door that's about two feet wide 
by six feet tall. And then when you are coupled together with others, it's the year, it's the decade, or it's the year of the door. And then when you can line up together, it can become a moving tank by which we extinguish the fiery darts of the evil one. Yes, you have a fire extinguisher. Now, I'm still looking at putting on the full armor of God. So I just want to look at some of this piece by piece because we're to be fully dressed, putting on the full armor of God. So in Ephesians chapter 6, in verse 14, and obviously different translations wonderfully give a different twist, a different emphasis uh, in different ways, unique ways. In Ephesians 6, 14, it states, Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. But I want to look at the first half of the verse, Ephesians 6, 14, then we would say A. Stand therefore, stand firm, having girded your waist with truth. Another version would read, and this is the, the title where I get the title that I am using. Let's belt out the truth. That's my title. Let's belt out the truth. That's my title for this podcast. Let's belt out the truth. Stand firm, therefore, having belted your waist with truth. The New King James translation says, having girded your waist with truth. So, we need to talk about what is truth and what, what does it mean and having it's a belt, the belt of truth. And let's learn to belt out our truth. It's used to truth is a sheath that is around the waist by which we're able to hold up our offensive weapon, which is the sword of the Spirit, which is the two-edged sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So the sheath is truth, which is able to hold up the sword of the Spirit. One's tunic would be tucked into whenever fighting and running. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 5, and 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. In warfare, we must be surrounded by absolute truthfulness. Truth. Truth can be talked about in different ways. Truth, truthfulness. The issue is not just doctrinal truth, but personal truthfulness, or you're going to get tripped up in battle. To stop the enemy, we must stop lying whether by exaggeration or understatement, but put on integrity in all we do and say. 
winning in the arena of spiritual warfare is first and foremost an issue and question of character. Let me do that again. Winning in the arena of spiritual warfare is first and foremost an issue and question of character. Does character matter in spiritual warfare? Or is it only about the offensive weapons that you carry? Do you know that it is quite offensive to not be walking in integrity? Jesus said, The God of this world is coming, and I have nothing in common with him. And so it is being on the other side if your character does not match up with your theology. Hello. So we need to remove the common ground that we have with the enemy. And that is part of what it means to be fully dressed and fully clothed with the full armor of God. And to let's belt out the truth. Let's not lie. Let's not exaggerate. And let's not underestimate. Huh? Sometimes I have a problem with negative self speech. And I have to catch myself, I have to repent. I have to confess it as in a sin. I fall short of the glory of God and get washed in the blood of Jesus. Because in that area, I am giving the enemy a foothold. And I have to remove that unholy welcome mat. And other people have an absolute unholy welcome mat in exaggeration or pride or hubris and excessive speech because it's all about me, Jesus. It's all about the worship service, the performance, the lights, the smoke. Sometimes I'd like to go in and unplug. Oh, you didn't hear me say that. We're two or three gathered together in his name. There he is in the midst. The highest weapon of spiritual warfare is God himself. Now, we have got to become girded with truth. I think we have a problem here. There is an exposure that has been taking place in the body of Christ. Unfortunately, I was just on the phone with a leader. <sighs> Major leader. I have to be careful what I'm saying right now. And then I was just on the phone with another leader. 
and I found out that what I just was told for over two hours had major holes in it. Now I have to do some praying and due diligence on how do I handle what I was just told. And right now, what I have to do is hold my tongue. Because that's walking in integrity. And one of the first things that we need to learn to do is pray before we open up our mouth. Or we will not end up walking in truth. We will end up walking in gossip. Uh -huh. So, what does it mean to gird our midsection, our waist, with truth? Let's look at this. The belt of truth, according to Ephesians 6.14. What does Paul mean by truth? Of course... Jesus, John 1, 14, John 14, 6, Ephesians 4, 21, Romans 13, 14. We put on the Lord Jesus Christ because Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. What does Paul mean when he says, to guard ourselves with truth. It's to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. I clothe myself with his character. I am filled with his power. I am committed to pursuing his purity. I stop always trying to defend myself I know it's hard but it's the Jesus way my goal is not to be right my goal is to follow the Jesus way two the Bible is the truth second Timothy Chapter 2, verse 15. Successful spiritual warfare begins with the question, do I accept the Bible as God's word, inspired, infallible, inerrant, the sole authority for belief and practice? Most don't today. Three, the church is the pillar of truth. First Timothy chapter 3, verses 14 and 15. Really? You mean you believe those old-fashioned things? Ultimately, yes. The church provides protection, reinforcement, of biblical virtues, stability, encouragement, and guidance. Four, objective truth of Christian doctrine. What? Fourth, objective truth of Christian doctrine is essential. John chapter 7, 15 through 17, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 14 and 15. Satan will always flourish in the midst of theological ignorance. There are two areas in particular in which demonic lies are most prevalent and powerful. Lies about God, 
his character and attributes. And lies about yourself, who you are, your identity and position in Christ, your authority and power. And number five, truth may also refer to truthfulness, integrity of speech and behavior. Truthfulness is the absence of duplicity, hypocrisy, no lying or deception. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 25 and chapter 5, verse 9. Here, folks, is a major problem we have today in the body of Christ, let alone in the political arena. We are not girded well with truth, fullness. We are not full of truth. We do not belt out truth. We belt out duplicity. We speak out of both sides of our mouth. And we need to repent. And we need, need to repair this. No wonder the world is the way it is, is because the church speaks with du we speak we speak with duplicity. A lack of integrity. I have been so heartsick over the things that have occurred in the body of Christ, in leadership, whether it's been Kansas City or the mega churches in Dallas, or now in my own backyard, things in another church here in the greater Nashville, and many places far and wide and near. But we are still going to have a Psalm 24 revival because who can ascend the hill of the Lord but he has clean hands and a pure heart and then before true ascension can occur there will be exposure and exposure happens because there is greater conviction and greater conviction reveals old levels of darkness because new levels of light have come. Truth may also refer to truthfulness, integrity of speech, and behavior. Truthfulness is the absence of duplicity, hypocrisy, or no lying or deception. Now let me just kind of try to talk from my heart so. On spiritual warfare side of things, one of the major demonic battles is with Leviathan, the twisty serpent that gets in between people, in between entities, and twists communications. I think it's been one of the major strongholds in my genealogical family background. And it twists communications. It's the twisty serpent found in the book of Job. And it causes what one person says and what someone else hears to become twisted. Did that person say something wrong? Possibly not. Did that person make a mistake in what they heard? Possibly not. But from the mouth to the ear, something happened. And it got changed. It was changed. And what they heard and what you said, or what you heard and what they said, is not the same. It got judged or it got twisted in motivation. And 
And so why? Why? Why do we sometimes, this is so important where I'm going to go right now, why do we sometimes not want to believe the truth? That's big. Why do we sometimes then, with the demonic, with having a common ground that needs to get cleaned up and removed so that the twisty serpent, that Leviathan or whatever it is, does not have power and authority? Why? Why do we believe a lie? instead of the truth. Sometimes we have a calloused heart because of sin. Because there's been a pattern for so long that sin, all sin, hardens, has an after effect. It offers pleasure at the moment, the book of Hebrews says. Sin always offers temporary pleasure. But it never tells us what its consequences are. It hardens the heart. And so after a while that we have believed the lie, we like the pleasure, but the hardness that comes, we have become calloused. And that's why we believe the lie, is because we've become calloused to the truth. And we want to cling on to the false security. Why? It's because we don't want to repent. Because with repentance, there's a requirement of something called change. We don't mind if someone else changes, but we're not sure that we want to be the one to humble ourselves, at least first. Because you want to know why? We want to be right. And sometimes we'll reach a place where we will want, we will reach a place where we'll say, I'm sorry. But I'm sorry and repentance is not the same thing. Because you can be regretful that something has happened. But that doesn't mean you're taking responsibility. Repentance is taking responsibility. So you would rather sometimes stay in your condition than and wait for the other person then you take responsibility, not point out, because, see, what you really want to do is point out their fault. And you're waiting for them, and you want to cast blame, and you want to be right. But if it's going to really be in truthfulness, you have to let go of your right to be right. And you have to let go of your right to be first. That's not truthful, this. You got to learn to let go. And you got to let go of your right to be right. Because the kingdom of God is moving in the opposite spirit. And Leviathan the Twisty Serpent is going to keep you wound and bound into a pattern that you are right. And your goal is to stay right, not to actually reconcile. Your goal is to be right. And you're going to prove that you're right. And that is what you think is the truth. Your version of the truth is that you're right. 
And even sometimes all of these legal issues of these searches, it's all about who's right. And some of this is not in the spirit of Jesus. Do we need to have correct facts? Yeah. Let's move on. Do I believe in healing and reconciliation and the need? Yeah, I really do. A lot. So sometimes we want to stay in the condition that we are just because we're tired. But we're weary. We're tired of doing this stuff. So leave me alone. We we want to stay. We want to be right. We actually become deceived, and we don't realize that we are deceived. And we would rather we exchange an error for the truth. And we are doing something else. We are exchanging the mind, exalting the mind of being right over actual truthfulness. What really happened? Yeah, but... And it creates a defensive mechanism. But could we walk in the light? And insecurity and bring it into the light and actually forgive and release. That's truthfulness. But you know what the church has done to me? Listen, I've suffered church abuse. I've suffered from authoritarianism. And guess what? There's word out that I've walked in it. And I'm sorry. Some of my pain. Some of my weariness. Some of my trauma. I haven't realized that I've developed some new patterns. Now, what I just did right then could be uh, excuses and not really, it, it, it's, it's a form of truth, but is it real humility? Is it truly being Honest. Hey, I'm sorry. Now, am I only sorry because I regret? Because I do regret. See, there's layers. I rejoice over any steps of progress. I haven't always. At times, I've just wanted the full deal. If it doesn't come with the full package and the full deal, then it doesn't really matter. Yeah. <laughs> you say, what are you doing, James Gall? I'm trying to be real. I've given my life to these things. Now, let's rejoice in small steps. Could we agree to do that? 
And would you rejoice with me on small steps? And I am sorry for any realms when I have not walked in authentic truthfulness. And I have hidden behind excuses. Now, I don't want people out there now to misunderstand and that this would now be being a statement that I have walked in immorality, because I have not, and that I have walked in uh, financial deception. I have not. Have I gotten angry? Yes. Have I gotten short? Yes. Am I proud of it? Absolutely not. And I ask that you forgive me. Can I do that? Yes. And anything more than that, I should keep between me and individual people. Yes. Right? But am I committed to putting on the full armor of God? Yes, I am. Are you? To all the leaders that are out there, I urge us in this day that we could make a commitment to the Word of God that it would be incarnational Christianity. This is a commitment to walking in the light. By the way, I've made some statements recently out of the book of Romans that no man owes me anything, and I know no man anything except to love. I have already fallen short of my goal. But I'm still holding myself to that standard. Mm -hmm. Will you join me? That is walking in truth. That is girding our waist, our loins, our midsection, with truth so that we can hold the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, in a proper manner, not injuring others or injuring ourselves. You know, so why, how and why do we end up in the condition that we don't walk in truth? It is because we forget of the power of this word and we walk away from it. Because we end up calloused. It is because we believe a lie versus the truth. Because we stop walking in a daily way in repentance. It's because we entertain and we make room for offense. It's because we get weary in well-doing. And we're told in the book of Galatians, you will reap if you don't grow weary in well-doing. It's because we set a wrong goal. And it takes some undoing that our goal is to be right. It's because we have bought into some deception. It's because of hubris, excessive pride. And pride always comes before a fall. And some of us would rather hold on to our position, which is false security. Those are some of the reasons 
why we will believe a lie instead of walking in truth. So what is belting out the truth, girding our loins with truth? It's putting on Christ. It's believing the Bible is the truth. It's believing that the church is the pillar of truth. It's believing in the objective truth of Christian doctrine. And it's believing that truthfulness, which is character, it matters. So this, too, is an effective weapon of spiritual warfare. And this, too, is how I can win my battles. This is how I win my battles. I want you to join me on the journey of I am surrounded and I put on truth in character, in belief, and in action. In Jesus' great name. This is James Gall with a God Encounters Today podcast. I ask that you consider getting The Triumph, the book. Perhaps getting the curriculum kit. Buy one as a gift for someone else. But folks, I'm releasing a challenge for us to go on a journey together inviting truthfulness into our lives and displacing deception and lies with light and truthfulness. In Jesus' great name, amen and amen. God bless you. What of it? Export as. Well, what happened? It's still going.